Hi, this is Larry Troca, and I just want to do a quick video today uh, concerning confirmation of uh, performance horses. And I have a photograph that you're looking at right now, um, and I'm just going to comment on what we're looking at here. So obviously, we're standing behind the horse, and the things that I want to point out are things that I really, really look for in a performance horse that has to really stop um, and, and actually be a good athlete, stay sound, the whole deal. So we're going to start at the top of this horse's rear end and work our way down. And the first thing I notice, I'm looking at the right hip, and here's the left hip, and the left hip is a little lower than the right hip. It might just be the way the horse is standing, uh, but if I had this horse standing up really square, I would sure want to see both hips the same height, level, okay? That's really, really important. Uh, if one is always lower than the other, there's something wrong. Uh, either there's, there's a weakness in one of the hind legs uh, and the other hind leg is carrying all the weight, uh, which I've actually seen quite a bit of, you know, if they're, if they're always sore in their left hind and they're carrying most of their weight on their right hind, the right side of their body will be more developed than their left side. That is way more common than you would ever imagine. Now looking, looking straight down this horse, we're going to divide the left side of the body from the right side of the body. And when you draw that line straight down, there should be, uh, you know, not much difference in one side from the other. It needs to be pretty symmetrical. The left side should be just as big as the right side. And you notice, now it just might be the light in this photo, but it looks like the right-hand side is just a tad bigger than the left-hand side. And again, you know, and it might just be the way the photo is, but uh, assuming that, that this horse is standing square and everything is, is, you know, right, I would say the right-hand side is more developed than the left-hand side. Not so much, though, that I would be real worried about it, but there is a difference. You know, I'd want to, you know, if I was going to buy this horse, I darn sure would want a, uh, a good vet taking a look at that. Now, the other thing I want to point out is here's our right stifle, here's our left stifle, here's our left hip bone, here's our right hip bone. Notice that the width between the two stifles is greater than the width between the two hip joints. I actually like that. Um, that is a good thing. It just means they're really, really strong. Um, you know, when you see the stifles wider than the top of the hips, uh, yeah, I, I really like it. Now, the, the main point I want to get to here uh, that I want to talk about is a horse's Gaskins because that is the one thing that I notice most owners really don't pay much attention to. Um, notice, here's the point of the hock, right here where my mouse pointer is. And you see the ligaments going straight up from the point of that hock. Okay, everything on the outside of that, those ligaments is the outside Gaskin muscle. Everything on the inside is called the inside Gaskin muscle. And do you see how well developed those Gaskins are? Now, you know, those Gaskins are actually kind of bulging. It would be my guess this horse could really, really stop um, and, and turn also. Uh, but more importantly, I would look at the inside Gaskin muscle as being uh, just critical for a hard stopping horse to have a large inside Gaskin muscle. If you look at a lot of horses, you'll see this inner part here be much smaller than what this horse's is. You'll notice there's a little bit of difference between the left, right, the left inside Gaskin muscle and the right inside Gaskin muscle. So that might have something to do with this side of the hindquarters being a tad smaller than the right-hand side. 
there may this horse may have had a, a, a lameness issue or a soreness issue at one time. Um, and that's why I'd have a vet look at it before I bought it. But, you know, it's still well-developed. Look at the, the bulge of the Gaskin muscle. And there's still a lot of inside Gaskin muscle over here also. So, you know, it may be nothing. Um, the other thing I want to look at is, you see the point of the hocks right here? Here's the left. Here's the right. You notice they're the same height, okay? They're level. Just like we want the top of the hips level. I want the horse level from the point of the hocks, okay? Now, when we look to, when we, when we go down, you notice as we go down this horse's legs, we're not seeing any wind puffs or knots on the inside or the outside of the uh, uh, fetlocks here. Horses that have been used real hard, uh, stopping real hard, usually have wind puffs right on the outside and inside of their uh, fetlocks. Uh, you know, that's more common than, than a lot of people realize. Now, when we look at this horse overall, you notice her stance is pretty wide. A lot of horses, their, their base would be quite a bit uh, closer together. Their hind feet would be closer together. My personal thoughts on this, I like it. I like to see a wide base here. Um, it will make the horse move different than a horse that has a narrow base. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I've had plenty of horses that were base narrow behind, and they were still really good stoppers, really good athletes. But one of the be some of the best stoppers I had had this this width between their two hind legs. Uh, I, I'm liking this horse a lot. Now, beans were back here looking. Let's look at the heels. We don't want to see the heels contracted or the heels re just on the ground. This horse here has kind of a, a uh, shallow heel. Now, I wouldn't worry about it that much, but it means that when it was time for the horse to get shod, I would want the shoes to come back, the trailers of the shoes coming back far enough to protect the bulbs of the heel. Now, I don't want trailers hanging way out back here because that's no good. You know, th that'll actually hinder a horse in the turnaround. But I'd want, I'd want the trailers to come out to the bulb of the heels just so that if this horse stopped real hard, it's, it, the bulbs aren't getting burned in the, in the ground, you know. Um, so that's pretty much all I really have to say about this horse. I might mention the, the tail set and the way the tail hangs. This looks pretty darn normal, but you'd be surprised at the number of horses whose tail is not normal. Um, we sure don't want to see a horse with an altered tail. Uh, if you're buying a reining horse uh, or a reined cow horse, you always need to look, uh, make sure the tail has not been altered. And by altered, what I mean is a lot of horses, a lot of reining horses, uh, a lot of horses that do a, a, a reining pattern, they a lot of times get over drilled, uh, drilled too much during the training, and it will cause them to start wringing their tail. Uh, same with dressage horses. I've seen dressage horses that wring their tail a lot. Again, it's from too much uh, of drilling. Uh, with with reining horses, it's usually too much spinning, and uh, once a horse starts wringing its tail, uh, you know what a lot of people will do is they'll have a vet either cut the tail muscles or they will give it a nerve block uh, before the show. Uh, I don't like either one. I don't want to do either one. I've never done either one because once you do that, uh, matter of fact, I'll tell you what, there's, there's a breeding farm right now that all their yearlings, they cut the tail muscles. Once you do that, the horse can't use its tail. It can't swat flies. It can't lift its tail to poop. Uh, so you got to keep it all, the tail all wrapped up and everything. Uh, so if you're looking at a horse, it's a reining horse, you make sure that horse can move its tail on its own and the tail just isn't dead. Uh, pretty easy to spot if you know, if you know what to look for. 
Um, and I think that's about it. That's, that's just about all I need to say ab about this horse here. Other than uh, you also want to look at the inside of the hocks, make sure there's no weird lumps or bumps or cal calcium deposits. Uh, looking at the outside of the hock, if you see a bump there that is squishy, like it's a bursa filled with, with liquid, that might mean the horse uh, is, has been stopping hard uh, quite a bit. And so that causes the joint to produce more synovial fluid. And so you'll get kind of like a, what's called a thorough pin right here on the outside of the hock. Um, and that's usually no big deal. Again, if I was going to buy the horse, I'd want, I'd want the vet to comment on it. But, you know, it's been my experience that that's not that big of a deal. All right. Well, this has gone on long enough. Um, I think we'll just call it quits right here. All right. Take care.